friends welcome to the next episode of book talk we have with us today pavitra somaiya she is a language buff a psychological counselor and a life coach she has written a beautiful book which combines languages words and psychology so let's talk to her and understand what she wants to convey through this book welcome to the show pavitra thank you thank you so much for having me you're welcome so i would like to start by asking you about the title of this book it is very interesting and uh, you know i found that the, uh, you have combined languages and body language with it so please tell us more about it hmm right so the title of my book is speak up stand out weaving your personal brand through words now if i talk about the title speak up stand out is an exact correlation with our daily life as well well if i ask you um most of the people out there might hesitate to confidently speak up their opinion or express their ideas and that is exactly because of certain psychological processes happening inside us due to which we become underconfident but on the other hand if we talk about language language is just acting as a aid it's a means to convey our ideas to express our opinions so i thought why not combine both of them together and present something on the aspect of psycholinguistics where you can not only understand how uh, learning a language or acquiring a language or seeing a different language can impact the processes inside your brain so for instance it can it can impact your learning your concentration in fact for that matter your confidence to a greater extent now if you talk about people uh, who struggle to express their ideas properly one of the major reason that i have found and the research also has found is because they don't uh, upskill themselves in that particular language now for instance if i don't know english and if i try to express my idea completely in english i will get stuck at a certain point in time due to which i will develop a cycle inside my mind that perhaps i am not confident enough to speak so when this cycle gets developed inside my mind i feel i am inferior than the most other people outside however the case is different the case is that maybe i need to upskill my level of english that is why i feel underconfident so hence the correct analysis of problem is important and that is why i came up with this idea where i can combine the psychology plus the language together which can act as a self help book for most of the people who are either struggling with language or they would like to learn a different language altogether wow that is really interesting thank you pavitra you yourself speak a lot of languages like gujarati hindi english and also international languages like french spanish portuguese and german as well so what do you think is the primary function of a language yeah as i mentioned a uh, primary function of a language is just acting as a medium whatever your opinion idea to express is that is the content but when you have the correct medium when you know that my medium is uh the most appropriate one for for instance many people they choose a wrong medium like i just gave an example if you are more comfortable in speaking in hindi then try to express in hindi because that will give you a boost to your confidence as well if you are choosing the wrong medium then ultimately what happens is we create a different analysis altogether which is false it's like a false assumption so language if i talk about is just a medium to express something now in terms of medium like you mentioned about different languages which i know and which i speak uh, they are again medium to help other people also learn that language so that they can also speak better but ultimately i would say the king of the entire thing is content content as in what you are trying to say or what you are trying to express is the king i think you are absolutely right Pavitra in your book you have spoken about the evolution of words so please tell us more about it right so with respect to evolution of words uh, if you remember uh, back then when um, human beings were not a part of this planet if i if i talk about even let's say the the context of ramayana and mahabharata let's just come from that uh, perspective so even when we discuss these holy epics or these events of mahabharata and ramayana then we can understand how language has uh, really changed itself uh in in that era in that period when specifically when arjun and krishna had a conversation and when arjun was very sad and krishna tried to convince him 
for uh, going in the battlefield and trying to g- give a war against his uh, uncles etc so that also is a is a part of language where krishna used a very convincing a very powerful language uh, uh, statement or words in order to convince arjuna to go in the battlefield so from there if we talk about how language has changed language has changed only in terms of what we are speaking for example earlier earlier it was sanskrit which was spoken most of the time but now we are uh, speaking hindi and english and maybe other regional languages as well so what i'm trying to emphasize here is that even though the language has changed over time but what remains constant what remains the same is how we can inculcate those same convincing and powerful language words into our everyday life for example if i go to a interview and i have to convince the interviewer that why am i the correct fit for the job or if a manager is speaking to an employee on something and the employee has to convince the manager about it then all of these are petty daily activities where we can absolutely integrate that part of uh, convincing skill or psychology into our everyday domain and this is exactly what is a part of neuro linguistic programming that is nlp so nlp if you look into it it's a specific niche of psychology which talks about the different aspects of language one is convincing the other one is how we can use it very effectively to make the other person negotiate on something so these are different uh, i would say levels of psychology combined with language together that was a very nice explanation thank you pavitra in this digital age the uh, concept of word is again evolving and your book speaks about that so please tell us more absolutely i would say that uh, in the 21st century with the lot of globalization and digitalization uh, with excessive use of of course uh, internet and other social media platforms as well um specifically ai which is artificial intelligence which has now come up into the market and this has really impacted the language sector now i'll just give you one example for example if i have to translate uh, one statement from let's say in hindi to english okay from hindi to english now if i uh, use ai for that matter the ai will give me a different set of translation altogether but if i go with my understanding of how to translate and as per my perception my translation would look different so why is there a bridge the bridge is there because the ai is only able to understand the uh, words and the construction and the grammar however if we as human beings we are, we are also able to understand what goes beyond the words as in the emotional part of it the um, value part of it for example if i have to say something in a very funny tone in a very um, funny aspect then i will keep it in that if i have to say something in a very sarcastic or in a very command tone then it would be different translation altogether so when it comes to the language sector uh, i i i strongly feel that uh, with the use of more of these softwares or ais uh, there is still a bridge or a gap which exists when it comes to translating from one language to another and hence this i have also brought up into notice into my book as well speak up and stand out so that it can be addressed um, to as many people and of course we can make uh, this concern and this problem better day by day by not relying that much to the ais of course it's important but at the end of the day what i feel strongly is if you understand the emotion and the logic behind that then you will be able to better give a better translation so that is the most important thing so knowing your language knowing your words is very important correct thank you your book mentions that words are catalysts between uh, personal growth and transformation yes. so can you tell us how yes definitely so words are of course a catalyst a means between personal growth and transformation that is because like i mentioned about uh, if you would like to build your personal brand now what is a personal brand i think many people nowadays uh, struggle to identify what is their personal brand in the market in any other field whatsoever so for example if i am working into an multinational company mnc and i strive for building my own personal brand or identity into the market that's because there might be other competitors or either i don't know the skill how to build the personal brand so personal brand is always uh something which is your usp and which always remains close to you so for example if anybody approaches me today at this particular date let's say for learning a foreign language or any language and then let's say the same person approaches uh, to me after 5 years so 
the way I am responding today and the way I'll respond after five years would be constant. It should be the same. So when it is same, it is constant. Only then it comes uh, to the other people to understand that, yes, this person is the same. The business is the same. There is no change. So why is there no change? The change has not happened because I have put a conscious effort from my side to keep every behavior into my professional domain constant so that it gives a good impression and my personal branding is still there in the market. So in order to build your personal brand, I think it's a very uh, important aspect to talk about language because language or words always act as a catalyst. Like I gave an example of uh, a case where you would like to negotiate on something, where you want to convince the other person on something. Again, the only means that we have is language. The only means that we have is the power words, the power language. And when these power words uh, become a part of your identity, they become constant. So automatically what happens as a result is your personal branding will, uh, will go on increasing. And there's nobody who can then stop you in the market. Uh, Pavitra, what is your take on language short? We use them a lot while chatting or even in emails nowadays. Yes, correct, correct. So language mm -hmm. short forms, for example, ASAP as soon as possible. Or for example, um, uh, like WhatsApp informal conversation looks as uh, roles or... Uh, Talk to you later. TTY. Yeah. Yeah. Or BRB, be right back. Yeah. So... Yeah. Uh, I, I agree that uh, these short forms have to a greater extent uh, decreased our time duration. So if, if I write as soon as possible, it might take much more time for me. But if I write ASAP, that's even quicker in time duration. So of course, these acronyms have made our life hassle-free, have made our life very easy, I would say. But at the same time, we have to know the balance. Where do I have to use these? Where do I don't have to use these? For instance, uh, for some people... I have seen if I write ASAP, it becomes very attacking as if you are asking the person to do something just right now and the person becomes a little irritated and hyper. Okay, I am I cannot do this right now. So um, to understand when to use these acronyms, we also have to understand with whom we are talking as in who is the other person? What are the emotional states involved? What is the mindset of the other person? What is your level of conversation? Sometimes we can jump to these acronyms all of a sudden and it might feel very attacking for the person just because you have not formed rapport with the person. If I already have a good rapport with the person and I am writing these acronyms, it might seem okay. So acronym is fine. Uh, it saves our time. That is also correct. But we should know the balance, when to use, where to use, how much to use. These are the factors we should always consider before using them. This is the new mannerism that has to be developed now. In technology. Correct, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Pavitra, do you think artificial intelligence will make it less necessary to learn languages? Hmm. That's a great question. Now, um, nowadays I have seen many young kids, many young adolescents who are just coming into the market and they are trying to explore different languages. Uh, often we have different applications and softwares on uh, the internet. For example, we have Duolingo the most famous one. There are most of the other um, uh, softwares and applications here. Uh, so what I feel if you're trying to learn a language, uh, it is good that if you're using these softwares and internet and YouTube, etc. But at the same time, uh, this doesn't give a structure. Now, I'll give you my example. I recently, uh, and it's a true example, recently I started learning Czech. Okay. Now, Czech, I started learning recently on my own through YouTube, Udemy, things like this. But then after 15, 20 days of investing into uh, these online videos, I realized that, no, it's not working. Although I could understand the basic words, basic greetings of this uh, Czech language, but still I felt, no, I require a person to teach me. So why do I feel I require a person to teach me? That's because we have a human connect. And as human beings, we always want that human connect, whether it is for a personal domain or for a work domain or for any other domain for that matter. We want a human connect. So when the human connect is missing, even I was not feeling as if I have learned something, even though I had learned greetings in Czech language, but I was not able to feel that into my body and brain until unless I'm able to speak it with someone in the human contact. So 
that is what it makes all the difference when you have a trainer everything goes in a very structured form for your learning of language uh, but other than that if i talk about yes it has like all of these uh, softwares and videos have definitely helped people to at least learn the basics of any language mm -hmm. that is a great answer you yeah. have dedicated an entire chapter to talk about the significance of english language in india yeah. please tell us more about that chapter importance of english language the importance of english language is of course there right from i think i'll i'll go back into the history and right from um the time when uh, we had these movements when uh, india was ruled by Brit british people and we had uh, other people coming into india for example portuguese or french people etc and uh, from that i think we have picked up english from that moment and if you uh, happen to know about even mahatma gandhi who went to africa to uh, uh, some abroad countries to study law again that was completely in english so i think that was the time the in the ancient era where the integration of english language happened into our everyday life and right from that moment to this moment if i see right now in 2024 i can see there's a drastic change happening now nowadays english has become a everyday language now for example i've seen uh, mothers speaking to their kids in english i have i have seen spouses having a conversation in english earlier earlier it was not the case for example if i am gujarati and i would speak to my kids in gujarati or i would speak to my spouse in gujarati or maybe hindi for that matter but nowadays we have um shifted from our regional language to more of english into our everyday house also but here i have a drawback the drawback is that i will give you my example when when i was small my father used to speak with me only in hindi Okay, we had a Hindi uh, environment in the house, but my mother and my grandmother used to speak with me in Gujarati. But again, the Hindi was something which dominated my uh, understanding because after home I go to school, right? I I go to school, I come back from school, I have tuitions, I have friends, I have teachers. Now all of these teachers they talk uh, talk and uh, converse in English. So when there is more of English and Hindi impacting my learning, how can I learn Gujarati in that case? So one drawback which I also felt at this moment is that the regional languages um slowly get ignored or they get at a corner to a greater extent, and this is where we should really bring our conscious effort to understand that no, those are also important as English or Hindi or any other foreign language for that matter. But yes, right now if I tell you in the present uh. scenario english has really taken a toll in every every household yes i agree <laughs> great thank you so much for sharing all this information pavitra pavitra this is a beautiful book which you have written about languages and about psychology so can you share your experience of teaching languages so helping people with psychological counseling and as a life coach so firstly i would like to thank you for this opportunity that we could come across here online and we could discuss about the book which i have written it's a great uh, opportunity for i think everybody out there who would like to connect and share and express their opinion with you and you are a wonderful host um on the top of that yes i would just like to say one thing before we end is that whenever we talk about psychology people still have this uh, false assumption and fear in the mind that oh i have to go to a psychologist i have to go to a psychiatrist for that matter so i would just like to say something is that uh, whenever you feel the need or the requirement to approach an expert or to approach a therapist don't hesitate to approach because we are living in the 21st century and as we approach doctors for example if if my hand is broken if i got a fracture we approach doctors right away we don't hesitate to go then why do we hesitate to approach a therapist why do we hesitate to approach a psychologist for that matter so this is the only reason uh, why i am trying to convey this here at this moment and uh, i think people who are hearing this they would understand this and uh, to a greater extent might in the near future um, approach a therapist uh, as soon as possible i would say uh, so that whatever concern they are facing in their life could be resolved thank you uh, thank you so much pavitra for joining and writing such a beautiful book i will share the link to buy this book in the description box i wish you all the best for all your projects and for all your books that you would be writing thank you i i hope many more books to come and i also hope Uh, that we can again get together to have a discussion on my second book as well <laughs> okay. yes i would i look forward to that
थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग पवित्रा बाय बाय हैव अ नाइस डे बाय थैंक यू बाय सो एवरीवन डू हैव अ लुक एट द लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स टू बाय दिस बुक इट इज अ ब्यूटीफुल बुक अबाउट लैंग्वेजेस एंड साइकोलॉजी एंड आई एम श्योर यू विल फाइंड अ लॉट ऑफ इंटरेस्टिंग फैक्ट्स इन द बुक सो सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट एपिसोड विद अ न्यू बुक विद अ न्यू ऑथर टिल देन कीप वॉचिंग लैंग्वेज टॉक्स Thank you very much.